Anyone that knows me knows that I have an affinity for the mentally ill. And Howard Hughes is one billionaire that I admire because of his reclusiveness. I wish I could live a similar lifestyle. And Howard Hughes, whose own guards never saw him at the Desert Inn, in which he lived for four years, I believe. He had a partition built outside of his hotel suite. So, in the off chance that he came out of his room into the adjacent room in the suite where his Mormon mafia, his caretakers were, he would not be seen. So, therefore, his guards never saw him. We're talking a man that was about a man that was seriously mentally ill. Obsessive compulsive disorder. Which led to his success. You know, he was born his father had a successful company. He was the founder of Hughes Tool Company. He invented a sharp Hughes rotary tricone rock drill bit during the Texas oil boom. He is best known as the father and namesake of Howard Hughes, the famous American business tycoon. So Hughes didn't grow up poor by any means. He grew up, uh, relatively speaking, in the lap of luxury. So you, some of you commenters, you new commenters, you just, oh, Elon Musk, you love these billionaires. You people, you know, like the one guy that has absolutely zero sense of humor. Like, he cares what you think. Hey, dumbass. I know he doesn't care what I was think. That's the joke, you moron. But the obsessive compulsive disorder, the obsessiveness, it, it propelled him. It propelled him in in his desire uh, to 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 figure out aviation. You know, not not sleeping, staying up hours and hours on end, just obsessed. And then later in the movie business. And in business, and and when when finally TWA TWA Airlines was strangled away from him, he became the richest man in America. Technically, not a billionaire, and I believe the richest man in the world. But I think it was a few hundred thousand dollars, about five hundred thousand dollars, which made him the richest man in the world at that point. So, although he's interesting, fascinating character, very interesting when the mentally ill are rich beyond belief. Great to see. So entertaining. Is that what we want to do for society? Let's go to Richard Wolff, the professor. Economics. Let's have him explain a thing to you morons. Not not all of you, but some of you who um, like want to defend Elon Musk and have no sense of humor. You idiot. I want to start with the automobile industry. Because it is such a statement about where we are in the United States today. Here's the basic story. The automobile industry has made a commitment to become a smaller industry. More profitable, but smaller. What do I mean? They're producing many fewer cars. They have no intention of selling the kinds of new cars that they used to. They are accommodating the change in America. The rich at the top who can and will be paying a lot of more, more money for a new car. And the rest of us, we are going to be living on used cars from now on. It's a split in the market. New for the rich, used for everybody else. And boy, does it symbolize what's happening. But let me give you the numbers. The last... Two years, the two years of the pandemic that we were told, you were told, I was told, were years of difficulty and compromise, have been the most profitable in the last 10 for the automobile industry. You know about how over the last year we've been hearing about a shortage of chips and supply chain disruptions. Don't believe it. What we have here is a classic move to reduce the supply of new cars and jack up the price. In the last year, we recorded the highest average price of an automobile, new automobile purchase in the United States, $48,000. Since the end of 2019, that is before the pandemic hit, 
Prices are up 30% for new cars. You get that? 30%. The production of new cars is way down, down 22%. So they cut the production, told us stories about chips, told us stories about supply chain disrupted. But what they were doing is classic elementary economics, cutting the supply, jacking up the price, and guess what? The profits went up. In other words, they got more of a benefit by raising the price than they lost by selling fewer new cars. And that's why they did it. It was the most profitable strategy, which we know because it was the most proper, uh, most profitable year for them. 